Okay, guys, so let's go through. Um, so you're looking at your paper four, you're going through those questions. Paper four, you can use a calculator. So let's identify the topics where we know we can use the calculator and where we should, and let's check we know how to do it. Okay, so have you found any particular topic we think? Yes, we have to. I mean, obviously, the whole just adding up and subtracting, you can always use calculator, but specific skills. Okay, so what? So we've got linear regression. Uh, can I ask you what that's about? Have you spotted something in a paper four where you need to be able to do linear regression? No, you've never. Not recently. It's usually in paper six. Paper six, okay. So we've got paper six for linear regression. Do you know what linear regression is for? What it's about? Um, on the line of this. Okay, so you, it's an equation of the line of best fit. Right. Um, how do we feel about doing that? It is what we did the other day. So yeah. Do you remind me how do we do it? Calculator here. Okay. How do you do it? So first of all, obviously, to do linear regression, the first thing you need in your calculator is what? Set of data. Set of data. So how do you put a set of data into your calculator? Nope. Stat. The stat button. Okay. Edit. Right. So... Stat button, edit, we can put values in. Okay. Um, ask you at this point, will you ever put a list in L1 and L2, for instance? What, there are two situations to use two lists. What would it be for? Because one is the frequency list and one is the X. Yeah. So, for instance, if I'm rolling dice, I might do one, two, three, four, five, six, and I get my results are the frequency in which I got those numbers. Okay? So eight, five, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twelve, seven, two, okay. So if I put data like that in, so I've got a nice ordered structured list one, that might be for frequency data. Um, okay, but will that be applicable for linear regression? Do we have to do linear regression for frequency data like this? No. No. So when we're doing linear regression, what kind of data are we talking about? Not continuous. Not continuous. What are we looking at when we're going to do linear regression? Okay, yeah, there's one word. Variables. How many? Two. two variables. Okay, we're doing, basically we're doing a two variable analysis. Okay, sorry for my writing. Two variable analysis. When we have on the calculator over here, when we have list one as a set of numbers, and this two is a set of, a frequency for those numbers. Have we got two variables? No, no we've only got one variable. Okay. Um, let's imagine though that this is two variables for the moment. I'll use the same numbers for both. How do you go about doing uh, your linear regression? How do you get the equation? Do you remember? Brianna does. Stat. No, sorry. Go across the count. And then it's like four. Two. Number four, linear regression. Okay. So we go to linear regression, press enter, 
X list, Y list, and just calculate. Right. So I've got here, so on my calculator I've got uh, Y equals AX plus B, and I've got A equals minus 0 0.229, so three significant figures, and B is 8.8. .8. So how do we put that together to make the equation? It would be Y equals minus 0 0.229X plus 8.8. .8. Okay. So we're not going to talk now about how you use that, that's, that's for another day, it's just can you do it on your calculator. What's missing from this screen that we could add to I, it? Uh, the R squared R value. The R value and the R squared, do you remember what they are for? No. The, strength of the strength of the correlation. And if it's not on my screen, do you remember how to get it? Yeah, so down here look. So second and zero for catalogue. I think if I go to alpha and D, I can. No, it doesn't work. Didn't work on mine. Might be on yours. If I go down to diagnosticon, all the way down. I think you can try the alpha and D, and it might take you straight to D, by the way. Um, is it like, I think there's yeah. an option in the window. Can you change it from the right? Can you do that as well? Yeah. Look where it is. Mode and just go down. Stat diagnostics on it. I've not known that. There you go, you found it. Diagnostic card makes it even easier though. Okay. So if we do that then and then we do stat and calc, then reg, okay, L1, L2, calculate. This time I've got my R and R squared. What does that tell me about um, R, by the way? What does that tell me about the correlation for what I've got? Strong. Strong. Weak. Oh, no, it's weak. You fell for it, didn't you? It's weak, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You looked at that and went at 9. That's good. Yeah, no, it's not 0 0.09. Okay. So it's pretty much no correlation, as you would expect, based on the data you've got. Okay. All right. Um, so just... Following on from this then, seeing as we're in the same area, what if we were going to do the one variable stats? So we've got mean, median, mode. Do we know how to get our calculator to do that? So let's now we've we go back and we've got stats and list. And now it's frequency data. Right? How do we find the mean, the median range? So what would be the mean? We don't, do we need a calculator to tell us the mode? Okay. Which one's the mode? Five. Five. Five's the mode score. But we can use our calculator to find the mean and the median. Remember how to do that? Start again. Calc. Two variables for the y and the x, but if it's frequency for the mean, yeah. Variable. So if we have our scatter plot with x and y again, yeah, we would do two variables. We could, but one variable stats for us is enough. List one frequency list is currently empty. Are you all sure you all know how to put L two for frequency list? No. Yeah. Um, is it bars? No. Not alpha, no. Second. Second. And then one. And one, look. L1, L2, L3 is all down in these numbers in blue. So ah. we're going to put L2 for two. So I can just enter that in nice and easy. All right. Is there any, any place where you can get these steps? Well, I'm recording this now. So oh. That could be a useful thing. Um, so we calculate. There's also a lot on YouTube anyway about how to use calc, but to be honest, a couple that I looked at were, right, if you want to unpack your calculator, take it out and switch it on using the on button. Right, so to find it at your level is quite difficult. There's a nice one on SL, Max, so you could look that, that would help you with certain things, but... Yeah. So when do we know when to use one variable or two variables? You use one variable when you've only got one variable. 
like uh, the number on the dice, how often that comes up is not a variable. So it's, um, when we do scatter plots, the two variables might be your English score and your math score. Um, the length of your hair and how long your fingers are, I don't know. You know two variables, two things that change. But when you've got one thing that changed, like score on a dice, and then just how often it changes, then you want um, Even with two variable statistics, you can just run one variable statistics twice, changing the list. Which just seems a bit of a waste. But what have we got here? So on the top, we've got x bar is the mean. Okay. So x bar is the mean for that variable. Okay. What's this here? Mine. That funny symbol. That one. 1.511. Do you remember what it is? Anyone? No? Do you remember talking standard <coughs> deviation? Have we taught that one? Yeah. Maybe not such a big thing for you in your course, but if you're asked to state the standard deviation, um, I don't think you are, but that's it. You will be next year. Um, but standard deviation is the the mean distance of a point from the mean. All right. So it's a measure of how spread out your data is. Um, if we scroll down, n is any idea? No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. N's just the number, in this case, the number of times the dice was rolled. So sometimes you might need to use that in a question. So um, if you're going to show your working, for instance, for estimating a mean, which again, I'm not going to go through now because it's not about a calculator, but make sure you can, you know, you could use your calculator to find that. Method. So what's that? The number of times something, you know, so it's adding up the frequencies basically. I've got 48, and if I add up the frequency list in my table, that would be 48. Um, min, Q1, do you know what Q1 is? Same hands go. Any other hands? No, Victor, wake up. I don't know what Q1 is. You don't know what Q1 is. Yana? It's like, it's like min and length will give you the interquartile range. Yeah, good. Q1 and Q3 are the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Do you remember talking about that? Yeah. And then the interquartile range, the middle 50% of your data. Is that med? And med is? Medium. No. Nope. Medium. Medium. That's the median score. Uh -huh. All right. The interquartile range is between 5 and 2 and should be written as? 3. Right, so I saw someone um, writing down actually two and five, for instance, in this case. You don't write that. So the interquartile range is, is three as well. Just so it happens the medium is also three. Sort of makes sense, doesn't it, with the dice that the median would be three? One, two, three, four, five, six. Be around there somewhere. Okay. The max value is six. Easy situation. Right. We've got the, all those. Statistical values. Yeah. Mo, look at the table and tell me which one appears the most. The mode is five because it's got the most in it. That's what we have. So, okay. Now, I know we did. We've done other things like switching stat plots on and things like that to show the data on the graph. You don't need to worry about doing that. I did say at the time, don't worry about trying to plot scatter plots and things like that. Don't worry about plotting a scatter plot, drawing the line of best fit on your calculator. It's, it's not necessary. We did it so that you could visualize what it's going to look like and, and work out how to do it, but that's not, not really necessary. Okay. Right, anything else along the statistics line that you can remember that you think, actually we need to check when we how to do that. Can you think of anything more in statistics that you might need to do? Uh, the range of f of x. Uh, that's not statistics yet. Okay. So the range, though, of a statistical data is just the min and the max. That was also uh -huh. in your list. All right. Okay, 
Are we happy with the stat stuff? Don't forget, if you're, what if you have a table of data and it's got groups for the x value instead of direct numbers? What would you put into your calculator? The midpoint. Again, okay, it's not a calculated thing, but you would still put the midpoint into your calculator for the x value right, if you've got grouped data. Now there's a question like, what is the midpoint? So make sure you've got that right. Okay. Moving on from stats then, what else do you think we need to make sure you know how to do? Fractions, but not just the fractions. Okay, fractions. You can use your calculator to work with fractions. Simplify fractions. So nice and quick one. Uh, how do we put a fraction in? Okay, we'll come back to that then. Um, how do we put fractions into your calculator? Uh, math, and then you go all the way to the end and it has the fraction. Okay, I'll add one thing there. Is there a quicker way anyone know? Alpha, y Alpha and y equals. y equals. Just to show you, once you've pressed Alpha, you've got these different menus. Okay, now this log base one as well you might choose to use. But fractions, just Alpha y equals got these different versions, choose one, right, and you can put a fraction in. Right, if we've got a fraction just as a number, if I put it in, press enter, it will simplify it for me. Right, so simplifying fractions is nice, yeah, if you've got to give your answers in the simplest form. If you're doing probability and you've got to multiply and add fractions together and, you know, just put it in as a fraction. For one thing, on your calculator, if you put a fraction in, you'll get a fraction out, unless it can't be. Right? If you put a decimal in, you'll get a decimal out, unless you want to specify otherwise. Yeah, I was going to say, can't you like, go into mode and then you can just... Yeah, so we can go to mode and we scroll down. We've got answers, auto, decimal, fraction. Mine's set to fraction because I was chatting about it the other day. All right? Put a fraction in. Now, something I've just wondered, actually. If I put 0 0.125 in and press enter, it does convert it to 1 8 form, which is quite nice. If I've got it set to fraction mode. Um, okay. Now, just to add to that, if you've got to graph something that is a fraction, so we go to our y equals button, you can also use fraction in here as well. So alpha, put the fraction in, and then, for instance, if you've got to do x plus 3 over x, then there's no chance that you're going to get it wrong by not putting brackets and things in the right place. So that's quite a nice one, so that you know then when you draw the graph, you're getting the right graph. So my window is set wrong, but uh, so if you've got to put a fractional function in, a reciprocal function, things might be worth putting it in as a fraction. Okay. Questions about that? All right, fractions, decimals. So um, normally I have mine. My calculator sets it auto so that if I put a fraction in, I get a fraction out. If I put a decimal in, I get a decimal out. That is so also true if you put, go into table, you'll notice everything's as a fraction because I put my function as a fraction. If I want my values as decimals, which we often do when we've got to plot, um, if I go back change that to decimals and go to table uh, it's because I've put it as a fraction I would have to put brackets x plus 3 sorry if I did x plus 3 divided by x obviously that's the same thing and now if I go to my table it's all as decimals okay so You've got to decide what you want it to look like, what values do you want afterwards. 
said. How do you simplify? Like how do you go big to simplify it on a company? Well, does it do it? So um, it doesn't work. Well. I don't think it does. So you know, you all know how to put different values of um, thing in, don't you? So you've got the math button, and you've got this to the root. Um, so math, if I want to put a different root in, number five. So it says answer because I didn't tell it, so I just need to go in there and put, so the fifth root of 32, for instance, press answer is two, so that's how you can put different roots in. As for um, simplifying root 65, well, Kind of just got to be able to do that. That's not something that's in your account. Do you know? Do you all remember how to simplify root sixty-five, leaving yeah. it in third form? Is it possible? No. What about um, root fifty? What would yeah. that be? Four times twenty-five. Four times twenty-five. I'll give you uh, two, sorry, two sorry, times twenty-five. Yeah. And then five. So it'd be five root two. Okay, I don't think your calculator is going to do that stuff. Because I haven't really grabbed a calculator, which, like, when you put in a third, it's more likely to find it as an answer. So I've only ever done Well, you can try. Let's try. Why don't we try um, root 15? But uh, that's not something I've ever done, actually. So maybe there's a mode in here. But I don't think so. That'd be very nice. Okay, so we've got fractions covered. We've got how you put thirds in, right? Anything else we need to make sure we know how to do? What is the main purpose of the calculator for you, really? Speed things up. Wow, speed things up. There's one particular topic that you're going to expect it to use your calculator for almost completely. Well, that comes under this one topic, to be honest. Well, that also comes under this topic. Graphs. Just graphs, okay? Functions and graphs. So when you, if we talk functions, whatever function it is you've got to put in, you're basically going to be asked to do the same things, aren't you? All right? Substitute, solve are the two things that you can be asked to do. Um, also, sketch, all right? So there's most of what you're going to be asked to do is within this topic. So what are the range of things that you're going to be have to do? Okay. Or like range and like how to find period amplitude well, I would say how to find period, amplitude, and range is not a calculator thing. It's a, well, range, maybe we could, can't we? How, what is the range, by the way? The, oh, the, the Y, and we would have to go min to max. Do you know how to find minimum values and maximum values on a calculator? Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, if we put in um, sine of X... What would my window need to be set to to see sine of x, by the way? Yeah. X from 0 to 360. 0 to 360. And then y from minus 1 to minus 1. Well, I'm going to put minus 1.2 to 1.2. And if I graph that, that's exactly what we were expecting to see, isn't it? No. Glad you said no. So what's the problem? Do you remember? It's in, re no. it's in radians mode, yeah. Do you know how to change? Mode. Oh, big thing. Mode degrees. Mode. Change it to degrees. Okay, that's an important thing. Don't get um don't get um sort of worried when that happens. Just remember the certain things. So if we've got a, a circular function like this. Do you know how to find the minimum maximum value if you need to? No. Yeah. Same with any function. 
the second cap. Everything's going to be in this second cap menu, really, isn't it? Right. Do you know how, what the value is used for? So find a Y value for a particular X. So if I do value, for instance, I can just go, well, if I've got to find the sine of 23, I could just do this, 23, oh, sorry. 23, enter, gives me the answer, 0 0.39. So there's another way to you. Once the function's in, use it, right? Um, go on, Alexander. Uh, what if you wanted to find from the Y to the X, like the opposite? Anyone? Um, how do you do it? There is a way, it's not quite as simple as just pressing a button. Do you remember? How would you do it? Yeah, so if you want to find a particular y value, I'd have to go in here and put, right, 0 0.5, graph it, oh, yeah. and find where they intersect, which leads us to looking at intercept. intercept. Right? Just to run through that again quickly. So, We've got to find first curve. If I'm happy, I'm on that curve. Happy, I'm on that curve. Now, something I've just discovered myself is this guess time. I used to just press enter and it did it. But now, actually, if I want to find that one instead of that one, this is when I move it during the guess phase. And actually, that's quicker than, you know, if I put it near that, press enter, there's my intersection. Okay, so when x is 30. Right. Um, how do we find the maximum place, for instance? So, second cap, maximum, all these ones to use. Again, we just go left bound, right bound. Don't need to be exact, yes, yeah, fine. It finds it. So we've got all those things that we can use. Now, all of those, the calculator skill itself is not, there's not a great deal to it, but you are going to have to really fully understand that and how to apply it to a, a range of questions. Okay? All right. See you after break. Let's see what this uh, video says. Quality on your graphing calculator. First, we want to press S. That's why I've got it on there. Have you got this one? Because if you haven't, there's no point going for it. No. No. You have the same one. You can grab down the way. There you go. There. Press enter. Have you got that on your calculator? No. You can install it. You can, but how do you then put less than four, for instance? It would be if you can change to greater than or less than. It's like that. And it, like, it replaces it equal, so you do less than four or greater than four. Isn't it? If you install it, obviously, get rid of it anyway, so you can. Yeah, that, that yeah. No, there's certain things that you're allowed. I can't, I'll have to check, but. Um, there's definitely certain things you're allowed to have. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Hacking Today, we're going, Today, we're going to, to look at how to use the polynomial 2 on the TI-84 Plus to solve the polynomial equation. equation. So let's, let's turn the calculator on and begin. begin. Start by pressing the X button and then scroll down until you find the voice mode to app. You might have more apps than me, so keep going. So he's got it on his, I need to get it on mine. Make sure it's highlighted and then press enter. A splash screen is displayed. Press any button to continue. On the main menu, you have six options. Option one is for the polynomial solver. Option 2 is for the simultaneous equation solver. Option 3 takes you back to the splash screen. Option 4 tells you each of the variables mean for the polynomial solver. Option 5 tells you each of the variables mean for the simultaneous equation solver. Option 6 exits the app. First option is the one you want. Should already be highlighted, so press enter. 
We're going to solve the equation on the right. So let's have a look at it. 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. We need, we need to have, have our equation, our equation set, set up in this corner. Otherwise, it's not going to work. work. We look, look at our equation and see that x squared, that's the highest power that we have. So our order is 2. Make sure that the order we have selected 2. Then press enter. Scrolling down, we can either choose real roots, imaginary roots, or polar roots. We're expecting real roots, so have real selected. Answers can either be decimal or fraction. Scroll down and select decimal. We can, we can have, have solutions as normal, normal numbers, scientific numbers, or even engineering, engineering numbers. I've, I've never had use for scientific or engineering, engineering so just leave it as normal. Scrolling to float. This tells us how many decimal places we should have an answer. Float means that the calculator will return as many decimal places as it can. Zero That's pretty useful, isn't it? You've always got to place. give it to two decimal places in your answer. It's set to be two decimal places straight away. We are working with the angles, so let's just leave it with degrees. On the bottom, you can see that we can return to the main menu by pressing Y equals. We can get a help menu by pressing trace, or we can continue to the next screen by pressing graph. So let's press graph. We're now presented with a screen where we can enter the coefficients of the equation. The coefficient is just the number of the x squared, the x, or the number of its own. As you can see, A2 is a number from the x squared. So we're going to press 3, and then press enter. The coefficient A1 is in front of the x, and so as that's 2, we're going to press 2, and press enter. A0, or A0, is the number of so we can see that's minus 5. Now make sure you press the correct minus sign, this one down here, then press 5. Now we enter the coefficients, check that we have entered them correctly, and what, and what we can, can then do is press graph. graph. Now, now as, as a quadratic, quadratic, we would expect two, two solutions, and then you can see we have two solutions. X1 is minus 1.6 recurring, and X2 is equal to 1. If we want to add the solutions so they were fractions, we can press the graph to toggle between fractions and decimals. So as you can see, X1 is now minus 5 thirds. Minus 1.6 recurring. We can go back, back by pressing mode, mode, which is the window button, button and actually change the setup of our polynomial finder. Pressing graph, graph twice will take us back. back. We can, can change the coefficients by pressing zoom. zoom. This means we can just quickly go and change the coefficients if that's all we're interested in. Obviously, pressing, pressing graph, graph takes us back to the solve. That's all for the time for today. I hope this has been helpful. And hopefully see you again on Hacking. Okay. Now, don't forget, the limitations of that are you and whether you understand when to use it or not. So you're only using that polysomal 2 when you have a quadratic equaling zero. zero. So sometimes you need to rearrange that. Okay. Obviously, you have other methods to do that. How else would you use it? Do it. Graphing it, just find it. Using the equation. Using your equation, if you were just going to do it long way. I would say on the calculator paper, you don't, you wouldn't be using the formula, the equation for solving a quadratic at all. So actually, that that's one of those things that becomes a bit redundant on this course. But they have marks from. Well, do you, how do you think they'll get marks out of you for using the formula when you don't really need to use the formula? No, see, I wouldn't say they would ever expect you to use the whole formula to find the solutions. There's one thing about that quadratic formula that you need to remember and be able to use that the calculator can't do for you. Remember? Do you remember the formula? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it then? Top of your head? Yeah, you'll remember that? Right, so it won't be on the video. But, um, yeah, minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That will give you your x solutions. Now, if we can get those solutions 
AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero using our calculator. We've got two different methods. Why would we ever use the formula? Right? And to be honest, you wouldn't, not in entirety now. So there is a reason why you would need to know for at least part of this formula. Why is that? Well, you get that on the calculator. Aaliyah? Sometimes you need to use a discriminant in particular. That's it. This b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. Do you remember that? Yeah. And what is it about the discriminant? So it can either equal 0, be less than 0, or greater than 0. And depending on which one you have, will depend, determine what? Do you remember? The amount of solutions. So the amount of solutions. So if it's equal to zero, one, one solution. Right. Less than zero, no solutions. no solutions. Greater than zero, two solutions. Now, this is a problem solving one because in a question, if you are told, for instance, that there are there is one solution, you can set it to be equal to zero, and then, for instance, if you're in a situation where you know it's ax squared plus 2x plus 3, and you are asked to find a, and you are told it has one real root, okay, then the a in the discriminant becomes the only unknown, and you can find it. Right? So that's how they would get you to, A, remember the formula, and B, start using the formula so that you can't use your calculator. Okay? All right? So I would say using it to find the roots is now a bit redundant for you. You're not going to bother. Right, use your calculator to do it, whether you do it graphically, whether you do it using polysum up to. Um, check with the polysum up to how to do the simultaneous equations. You all remember to do that or yeah. not? In the paper 6 or paper 2, will be, will be the is if it's not in your formula booklet, you'll be expected to remember your formula. Yeah, that one. Check at the front of the paper. Okay. Uh, we don't remember the poly so much to how to do the simultaneous equations. What would you do here once you get to the screen? Okay, so um, I need to. Because I can't put it on my calculator, so I'm just going to have to go through it. All right. So, when you go through the simultaneous equation solver, so for instance, if we've got simultaneous equations 2x plus 3y equals 7 and 4x minus 2y equals... I have no idea whether this is going to work. I'm just made up numbers. All right. But let's say we're going to try and find the solution. So, simultaneous equations... How would you try and do it without a calculator? Yeah, I will multiply first equation by, for example, four. Four? Yes. I wouldn't bother. I just multiply by two okay, to make the four x's the same. Yeah. So, what method is that? That's called the elimination. elimination method. So then you'd add or subtract depending on what you need to do. Okay. So that's the algebraic method. But if we're going to use our calculator, two methods again. First one is Use the app. Second one is graphically. Graphically, and if we were going to do it graphically, you'd have to be able to the rearrange these. So, let's just check. How would you rearrange this to be able to put it into your calculator? Ten. You know how to do these. Yeah. And what would you do first? Minus 2x becomes 3y equals 7 minus 2x. And then divide everything by 3. And divide 2 by 3. So we've got 7 minus 2x all divided by 3. So again, putting it into your calculator, you either use the fraction button or you put it in brackets and use the divide by 3, however you want to do it. Okay. The simultaneous equation solver, when you run it, what comes up? I can't show you on the screen. Again, can you press your... Go to polysimul2, press simultaneous equation solver. What comes up? Equations, unknown. That's more 
Okay, it's the same thing. So equations is two, so that's what we've got. Alright. And then fractions, decimals, same idea, yeah? Then what happens? Gives you a system matrix. Gives you a matrix. Okay. Um, and do we have one, two, three slots, yeah? Mm -hmm. One, two, three slots. Yep. Like that. That's what we see, yeah? Yeah. Is there a line anywhere? Yes. Yeah. Where? Uh, just before the answer. So here, here, there's a line. Okay. So what we have to do is if we're trying to solve, so what we had, the first line, 2x plus 3y equals 7, and the next one, 4x minus 2y. Now, what I've done here is I've kept all the x's, all the y's, and the numbers on the same thing anyway. But when you put the matrix in, be careful that x, y's, answer, right, this one after the line is always the answer, x and y can be either way round as long as you remember which way round it is and you are consistent. So you can't put the first x there and then put the y one for the second one there. So it has to be all the x's, all the y's. So in my matrix I would just put 2, 3, 7 and this one would be 4, minus 2 and 8. So I set it up as a matrix. And then I guess you can just click solve. Yeah. Alright, and then I think you have to remember which one you set as X and Y, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Did it give you any nice answers? 2.375. So X would be? 2.375. And Y would be? 0.75. Okay. So that's how you'd use a similar term. Now that one could prove quite nice. I would say that you potentially are still going to have to do your, show your methods for similar terms, but at least you can find the answers. Right? Can you swap between fractions and decimals in that as well? Yeah. So that might be quite handy as well. Yeah. So instead of writing a rounded decimal that you shouldn't have done, convert it to fractions and give them as answers. Right. Might be quite nice. So that's quite helpful. I think you're allowed that one. That's a definite. You are allowed that one. Isn't it? Right. Any. Go on. When for the working out, do you just like rework the. Just no, no. I would say once I've got my answers, if I. You know, if I'm running out of time, for instance, at the end, get the answers and write them down because there'll be a couple of marks for it. Right? And then if I feel I can, go back and start doing the proper working out elimination methods. So again, um, I was chatting about it with my year 13. Do you understand the difference between the words that will appear in your exam paper? So that's quite useful with on the calculator paper. So... For instance, do you know the difference between the word find, calculate, evaluate, solve, and show that? Just evaluate. So, for instance, you think of the kind of things you've got to do. If it says find the value of, find x, find, it means do it however you want. They just want you to write down the answer. They don't really care about the working. So if it says find, forget working marks. It's probably going to be one mark, maybe two marks for the answer. That's it. Calculate means they want to see how you've calculated your answer. All right. Evaluate, again, they want to see your working, but normally you get evaluate when you've got to put a number in to a function and find out an answer. Alright, so that's a different, uh, similar sort of thing, but, you know, nothing really different for you, you know what's going to happen. Uh, solve just means... Mm. Yeah. yeah, so solve 4x, solve 4a, so, you know, that's the one that you're probably going to have to do a bit of rearranging to do. And show that, well we've talked about the show that ones before. Show that is basically 
calculate, but you've been given the answer. So, what you need to do with the show that question is figure out what it is they're asking you to calculate and then calculate. Ignore the answer even is there and then just check your answer at the end. So it'll be show that x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0. And if you're looking at a shape problem, it's more than likely going to be calculate an equation for the area. So that's what you need to rethink it through. Okay. So if it says find, find the solution to these simultaneous equations, just do it on your calculator. If it says calculate x and y, the point of intersection, whatever, you're going to need to show some working. Kind of a, a rough way of thinking about it. Any other questions on anything calculator wise? I'll, do we feel we're happy enough with a calculator? Yeah. All right. Um, I would suggest in your revision time, go on YouTube, figure out if there's anything else. Might be something that's useful for you, but I would definitely on your paper four. Um, Try and use your calculator for as much as possible, all right? Because that's why it's a calculator paper. There'll be some questions where it's just not necessary to use your calculator and it'll be easier without it. But that's how the questions are written, so, you know, think it through. All right? Stop there.